Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to uh, just do a quick comparison between the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter um, F4 point, or excuse me, F5 to 6.3. VC USD zoom lens that was released last year as compared with this new Canon 1 to 400 millimeter f4.5 to 5.6 LIS USM Mark II lens that has just gone on sale in the past month. Now, I won't uh, take long with this, but I do know, understand that there will be a number of you that uh, perhaps will be doing some cross shopping between these two lenses. And so I wanted to give you uh, kind of my feelings after having spent uh, about a year now with the Tamron and then having spent the last month with the new uh, Canon and, and see how they kind of weigh out. Now, I recognize that while these, there will be some of you that are cross shopping these, one of the big things to note, of course, is the Tamron is much, much cheaper than the Canon. It runs approximately half of what the Canon cost. And um, after having spent a year with the Tamron, I do want to praise it because Tamron did a pretty amazing job for developing a zoom lens into that kind of reach, 600 millimeters, that is able to have good accurate focus, a good image stabilizer, and then also to have very good image quality throughout the uh, zoom range and particularly between 150 and about 500 millimeters. But even at uh, 600 millimeters, stop down to f8, the lens produces very good results. And in the hands of the right users, um, it can really produce some, some excellent results that is that is very impressive when you consider that its price point is barely over a thousand dollars. And so once again, I say kudos to Tamron for really kind of pushing the envelope both in uh, the image quality from a lens like this, a consumer grade um, zoom lens and making it, but at the same time at a price point that makes it affordable really for the masses. And it's for that reason that over this past year, uh, the demand for the Tamron has remained intense. And, uh, and so, Great job, Tamron, for producing a wonderful lens. Now, Canon was a little bit later to the party, so to speak, and I wouldn't be surprised if Tamron has grabbed a little bit of market share, but this was a highly anticipated lens for a very good reason. And I have to say, after having spent time with it, that while Canon perhaps could have been a little faster in getting it out to not lose that market share, they've done an amazing job with this lens. And, uh, and so let's take a, a quick look uh, and compare uh, the pros for this new Canon lens. Number one, I would say that it has a superior build quality. The Tamron um, is very nice for its price point, but certainly this Canon lens is in a whole nother level. It's a very pro build. It reminds me a lot of in its build quality of a, another lens that I love, and that's the Canon 70 to 300 millimeter um, L series lens. But at the same time, they've also introduced a number of, of very cool new features that I'll highlight more in the review, but with the lens hood, also the zoom lock here, and, uh, and they've just done a number of very, very clever things. It's a very nicely built lens, and, and so I would say it definitely gets um, a pro when it comes to its build quality. It has a slightly better AF servo tracking and focus. In another video, I've, I've looked at and actually examined and tested side by side the focus speed of both these. And um, the, the, both of them do a great job. Uh, the Canon, in some situations, is just a hair slower when it comes to stills focus, and, but that's only if it is focused, it begins focused towards its minimum focus distance because it, um, it is able to focus down much closer than what the Tamron, and that's a very big advantage. The Tamron can only focus down to a minimum of um, about, it's, it's 2.7 millimeters or about 8.9 feet. The Canon, by comparison, can focus all the way down to right under a meter, and, and so we are talking a minimum focus in feet of three and a half feet, which is incredible at 400 millimeters. And so, of course, it has also comes, comes with that. It has a better maximum magnification. As you can see, neither of these are small lenses, but the Canon is able to store uh, much more small. And, and for example, in one of my backpacks, I'm actually able to fit the Canon mounted onto 
a, a body like a 6D like this, I'm actually able to mount it and lay it in the top of the bag rather than having to open the bag up to where it, um, it, it mounts in that kind of position. And so that's a definite plus for me and for those of you that like to travel. This really gives you a lot of great reach in a very compact package. And so a big plus to Canon for its job there. It also has an advantage in having more stabilizer modes. And um, the uh, Tamron, it has basically just an on and off for its vibration compensation and whatever changes it makes depending on situations is internal algorithms. The um, Canon gives you a choice of three different stabilizer modes and uh, those can, if you want to read my written review, you can see I detail what each one of those modes actually does. But definitely a plus there. Another pro for the Canon is when it comes to the front element. It has a very common 77 millimeter front filter thread and uh, that's a big plus. The Tamron has a much larger front element, which means it has a 95 millimeter um, front filter thread. 95 mill millimeter filters are both um, harder to find, but also quite a bit more expensive. And also add on to that, that along with kind of included accessories when it comes to that, not only are you going to be looking at a little bit more investment when it comes to a front filter, the Tamron also comes with no kind of case. And so um, you also need to recognize that uh, if you're going to look for a case for this, you're going to have to spend some extra money there. The uh, Canon, of course, comes with a very nice padded case. I've already noted it has much better maximum magnification. I would say it has a superior hood design. Um, the Tamron's hood is simply massive. This is a nicer build and also of course it has that very unique window inside that I think is a great feature. And, and so that's another um, very strong pro for this. I would also note that the stabilizer is a little bit more effective um, in the Canon. Um, it, I find that it does a better job of holding the viewfinder still and steady and, and so I, I prefer the actual action from this um, to that of the Tamron. I can, I can achieve almost similar hand holding results with both lenses but I really feel like I have to work harder when it comes to the Tamron. Now when it comes to advantages for the Tamron, um, number one, it has a much better price. It's half the price. It, it's in a range that is affordable for far more people. Uh, secondly, it also has a um, it has a larger zoom range, and of course, natively zooms out to 600 millimeters. By comparison, the Tam, or excuse me, the Canon requires the use of a, an extender, a 1.4 times is about all you can probably get away with, um, but 1.4 times to achieve a 560 millimeter equivalent. But of course the downside to that is that with a first party um, extender like a Canon extender on a body like my Canon 6D, it won't natively autofocus because the minimum um, or the maximum aperture, I should say, at uh, the long end becomes an effective f8, which means that it won't af. Now I can use a Kanko extender and it works fine and will autofocus just fine, um, but that's just something to be aware of. Um, some bodies like the 7D Mark II, the 5D Mark III, and the 1DX, um, it will autofocus at f8, um, at least with the center point, and so you will be able to use this lens with an ex Canon extender on. On that, but that's something to consider if you need the extra reach. Um, another thing that is, is kind of a, a slight plus for the Tamron is that its tripod collar is completely removable. I prefer to shoot handheld most of the time, and if I'm going out into the field, I very rarely am packing along a tripod or even a monopod for that matter, and so I tend to use lenses in their bare form. And while the Canon is a little bit easier to handhold in terms of its weight and balance, the Tamron, this tripod collar is completely removable. But at the same time, Canon has a pretty neat feature in that while the whole tripod is not removable, the tripod foot is removable, and so it's able to not add a whole lot of weight and get out of your way. Um, and so there's some of the advantages there, and, and as I've noted, because, it, and it's kind of a, a trade-off one way to the other, because it has a, a not as close minimum focus distance, in some situations, if the lens is defocused towards the minimum area, the Tamron's focus is actually a hair faster, but of course, it's a huge advantage to have that great minimum focus range, which allows this lens to have uh, an over 0.3 times um, uh, maximum magnification, which means that's almost one third life size. For a lot of people, the versatility of this lens means that it's going to be able to be 
uh, used for a lot of purposes outside of wildlife. And so that's pretty huge. And so I just wanted to kind of highlight what I consider pros and cons either direction. And in summation, I go into this a little bit more in my actual full review of this lens. But I would say that this, if, if you're able to afford it, this lens, it has a lot going for it. Um, it has very impressive image quality. I would say probably a hair better than the Tamron. Um, but uh, if, you, if you can't afford the Canon, the Tamron is still a great choice. And I expect even with the release of this and Sigma's new 100 to 150 to 600 millimeter, Tamron's gonna continue to sell a lot of these lenses. And one big plus that although it's a third party lens, I found its autofocus to be very accurate. And so that's something that's pretty huge. It doesn't matter how sharp your lens is. If it can't properly autofocus, all of that sharpness is wasted. And um, both of these lenses are, are very accurate. The Canon has, has exceptionally accurate focus. And so that's, that's a huge plus for it. And, uh, and so anyway, I hope that you this has given you maybe some food for thought and some help in your shopping process. And if you want linkage to uh, my full written review, you can look down below. And also there are some links to both of these lenses at BNH if you want to take a look at and do some shopping. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.